IBESS, Climate Change and Energy Production Part 8, will examine strategies for mitigating climate change and adapting to climate change. Did you hear the two verbs, to mitigate, to adapt? Pay close attention. The significant ideas are there are mitigation attempts to reduce the causes of climate change, and there are adaptation attempts to manage the impacts of climate change. Again, notice the difference here. Mitigation to reduce causes of climate change. Adaptation to manage the impacts. Pay close attention. Adaptations to manage climate change impact is the subject of the next movie. Here is the outline of all the available movies in the Climate Change and Energy Production Unit. Use this outline to find the movie you need for review. This movie is focused here on mitigation strategies. Here is the first IB syllabus statement of the movie. Discuss mitigation strategies to deal with the impacts of climate change. And by IB syllabus, mitigation is use of technology and substitution to reduce resource inputs and emissions per unit of output. Mitigation involves a reduction and or stabilization of greenhouse gases and their removal from the atmosphere. Here is a list of mitigation strategies to reduce greenhouse gases. A reduction of energy consumption, reduction of emissions of oxides of nitrogen and methane from agriculture, use of alternatives to fossil fuels, and geoengineering. I will provide visual imagery of each of these strategies, including strategies for carbon dioxide removal from the atmosphere. Remember to apply the framework for pollution management as you approach the mitigation of climate change. I will not review the framework here. You should be quite familiar with the framework by now. I've covered it in at least three previous movies. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to reduce energy use. Turn off lights. Use fluorescent lights. Strategy 1 development of alternative technologies or the adoption of alternative lifestyles or values through campaigns, education, and economic incentive. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to reduce energy use. Use public transport, carpool, or use your bicycle. Strategy 1, the adoption of alternative lifestyles or values through campaigns, education, and economic incentives. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to reduce the use of nitrogen-based inorganic fertilizers that result in nitrous oxide release to the atmosphere. This would be strategy one, the adoption of alternative lifestyles and values through campaigns, education, and economic incentive. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to reduce meat eating to reduce cattle production and the release of methane into the atmosphere. This would be strategy one, the adoption of alternative lifestyles and values through campaigns, education, and economic incentive. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to reduce wet rice cultivation to reduce the release of methane into the atmosphere. Is this possible? What would be the implications for food production in less economically developed countries. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to increase the use of renewable energy forms such as wind energy. We should replace industrial fossil fuel energy, as you can see in the image on the left, with alternative wind power energy. This is strategy one, use of technology and substitution to reduce resource inputs and emissions per unit of output. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to increase the use of renewable energy forms such as solar energy. Replace industrial fossil fuel energy with alternative solar power energy. Strategy one, use of technology and substitution to reduce resource inputs and emissions per unit output. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to increase nuclear energy. Replace industrial fossil fuel energy with nuclear energy. This would reduce carbon dioxide emissions. But there are risks. Be thoughtful here. 
A level two mitigation strategy would be controlling the release of the pollutant by developing technologies for extracting the pollutant from waste emissions. For example, smokestack scrubbers, filters, catalytic converters in automobiles. A level three mitigation strategy would be to employ geoengineering. For example, sequestering carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and storing it in solid form below the ground. This is a level three strategy, cleanup and restoration of damaged ecosystems by extracting and removing the pollutant from the ecosystem. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to reduce deforestation. By leaving trees in place, trees remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This would be a level one strategy. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to choose natural gas before coal. Natural gas emits less carbon dioxide per unit of energy than coal. But be thoughtful here. Both of these fuel forms are fossil fuels. Both release substantial amounts of carbon dioxide. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to regulate or ban CFC aerosol cans or find alternatives to refrigerants or use alternative packaging materials, foams, or less packaging material. All a level one strategy. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to clean up and restore damaged ecosystems by replanting, restocking lost or depleted populations of plant and animal species, or reforestation, as you can see in this image, plants remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere when they photosynthesize. This would be a level three strategy. Now let me dig into this slightly more specific IB syllabus statement. Mitigation strategies for carbon dioxide removal include protecting or enhancing carbon sinks through land management, using biomass as a fuel source, using carbon capture and storage, and enhancing carbon dioxide absorption by the oceans by fertilizing the oceans. Now I've already mentioned protecting forests and carbon capture. Have you been paying attention? Let me tackle each of these concepts in sequence. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to protect forests through legislation, create forest reserves, or create national parks. This is a level one strategy. A mitigation strategy to reduce the causes of climate change would be to replant or restock lost or depleted populations of plant species. Reforestation is a level three strategy for the mitigation of climate change because plants remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere when they photosynthesize. REDD, RED, is a UN program reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. RED serves to enhance the sustainable management of forests and forest carbon stocks. Take notes. RED is reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation and includes the role of conservation, the sustainable management of forests, and the enhancement of forest carbon stocks in developing countries. REDD plus reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation plus the role of conservation, sustainable management of forests, and the enhancement of forest carbon stocks in developing countries. RED was first negotiated under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change in 2005 with the objective of mitigating climate change through reducing net emissions of greenhouse gases through the enhanced forest management in developing countries. Most of the key RED plus decisions were completed in 2013 in Warsaw. The UN has the REDD Plus program as well as the UN REDD program, the UNRED. The UNRED is a program to assist countries, particularly less economically developed countries, meet the RED guidelines. If a country can meet the REDD guidelines, there are financial incentives. Think level one strategy here. 
as well, REDD guidelines include the involvement of indigenous peoples in decisions on forest management. REDD has its focus on the sustainable management of forests in developing countries, as you can see in this image, reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation, as well as the role of conservation. I have just covered this IB syllabus statement. Mitigation strategies for carbon dioxide removal, including protecting and enhancing carbon sinks through land management. REDD, red, is included in the IB syllabus. Take notes. Biofuels include wood, dung, and alcohol. The ethanol comes from fermented plants. The term biofuel is used because the energy in biofuels, wood, dung, and the alcohol, comes from photosynthesis, the uptake of carbon dioxide, to produce energy-rich organic molecules that are used as biofuels. Burning wood, dung, or ethanol is considered carbon neutral. Thus, the use of biomass energy mitigates climate change. Biomass energy originates from plants that have removed carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. It's very important for you to understand why wood, dung, and ethanol as fuel sources serve to mitigate climate change. They are carbon dioxide neutral. The carbon dioxide released when they are burned is absorbed by photosynthesis in plant growth. Carbon neutral. Can you explain why biomass energy, also known as biofuel energy, is considered renewable? Can you explain why biomass energy is carbon neutral, thus mitigating the impact of climate change? The explanation is here in the circle in front of you. Ethanol, used to power engines, comes from the fermentation of plants, often sugarcane. Now that you understand why ethanol is considered carbon neutral, here is a difficult question. Were forests cut down to grow sugarcane? If so, ethanol may not be as carbon neutral as its proponents might argue. And have we lost the diversity of our old growth forests in the change in land use? And is land for growing food crops being changed to make fuel? If so, then those of us with the economic privilege to demand fuel for our cars or planes might be causing less food to be grown for societies who need food. We need to consider the implications of ethanol as a fuel source carefully. So now I've covered protecting and enhancing carbon sinks through land management and using biomass as a fuel source. Now let's look at mitigation strategies for carbon dioxide removal using carbon capture and storage. Let's take a look, take some notes. This is geoengineering, taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and forcing it underground to be stored as a solid. Removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere mitigates climate change. Carbon capture and storage is carried out when carbon dioxide is compressed and transported and stored permanently underground or chemically fixed to form a carbonate. This is a geoengineering strategy. Here is another image of carbon capture and storage. Carbon dioxide is compressed and stored permanently underground or chemically fixed to form a carbonate. One more time, geoengineering, do you understand the climate change mitigation strategy of carbon capture and storage? So I've covered protecting and enhancing carbon sinks through land management, using biomass as a fuel source, and using carbon capture and storage, a geoengineering strategy. Lastly, mitigation strategies for carbon dioxide removal include enhancing carbon dioxide absorption by the oceans by fertilizing the oceans. Let's take a look. Iron is thought to be a limiting factor in ocean productivity. Thus, the theory behind this mitigation strategy goes like this. Add iron, photosynthetic 
productivity increases, carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere. The iron acts like a fertilizer, stimulating the productivity of the phytoplankton. When the phytoplankton die, they sink to the bottom, thus sequestering carbon deep in the ocean. Carbon dioxide is taken up by a bloom of phytoplankton stimulated by fertilizers like iron. Once the phytoplankton die, they sink to the bottom, trapping carbon in ocean sediments for a long time. The movement of carbon from the atmosphere to ocean depth is known as the biological pump. Can the pump be stimulated by fertilizing the ocean with iron? Can carbon dioxide be successfully removed from the atmosphere and trapped in ocean sediments through fertilizing the ocean with iron? And that is the question for geoengineering. Will geoengineering successfully remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and maintain a natural system, or will oceans be degraded by a failed strategy? Can geoengineering stimulate blooms of phytoplankton, as seen in this image, in order to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? Other geoengineering projects to mitigate climate change could include positioning mirrors in space to reflect solar energy. What are the costs and what are the implications? Another geoengineering project would be to spray aerosols into the atmosphere. The aerosols would reflect solar energy. Is this a temporary fix? And what are the implications? What if it doesn't work? What other problems will arise that we did not anticipate? Now in this slide, can you see other mitigation strategies for climate change? We could increase cloud cover with forced evaporation of seawater, or we could use genetically modified trees to increase plant productivity. Here's CCS and ocean fertilization. Identify by name the geoengineering strategies seen in this image all of which serve to mitigate climate change. In other words, all of these strategies serve to reduce the average temperature of the Earth. You can turn the movie off now or follow along with me. A. Mirrors positioned in space to reflect solar energy, serving to cool the Earth. B. Increasing the evaporation of water to induce cloud formation to reflect solar energy, serving to cool the Earth. Sequester carbon dioxide underground, reducing the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Fertilize the ocean with iron to increase phytoplankton productivity, thus reducing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Reforestation, increasing our forests would serve to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, or releasing aerosols into the atmosphere to reflect solar energy. Remember that even if mitigation strategies drastically reduce future emissions to greenhouse gases, past emissions will continue to have an effect for decades to come. You've seen this table before, but what I'd like you to do is focus on this column right here, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and CFCs all have substantial lifetimes in the atmosphere. So even if mitigation strategies drastically reduce future emissions to greenhouse gases, past emissions will continue to have an effect for decades to come. And as you consider mitigation strategies, you need to always apply the framework for pollution management. Among the four mitigation strategies for removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, strategies that were central to this movie, protecting and enhancing carbon sinks through land management and using biomass as a fuel source were level one strategies that involve altering human activities. Both carbon capture and enhancing carbon dioxide absorption by the oceans through fertilizing are level three strategies, cleanup and restoration of damaged ecosystems by extracting and removing the pollutant from the ecosystem. And that brings us to the end 
of IBESS Climate Change and Energy Production, Part 8.